Okay, <clears throat> we're back with this hand-wired Tram D201 had just been finished up. Before it gets boxed up, um, it dawned on me, I've heard a lot of people over the years, they always say how, oh, these old tube radios, they're splatter boxes, man, those things, you know, get, get yourself a new one. Of course, the old tube guys know better. And I want to prove that. I want to prove that this radio is just as good, actually, if not better, than your modern radio. Um... The test setup I have, we're going to be doing our measurements with the spectrum analyzer over there. It's turned on. The setup right now, we have coming out of the back of the radio through this LMR 400. Follow this coax cable down underneath the bench. Flashlight on here. You can see there's 230 dB attenuator. So that LMR 400 goes into the 30 dB attenuator on the floor. Comes out of that goes into the 30 dB attenuator sitting on top of it. And there's a LMR240 coax cable comes out of that attenuator, runs over and into the spectrum analyzer. So we have the reference offset set at 60 dB. I currently have the spectrum analyzer already set up to read adjacent channel power. So with a CB channels, their your channels are the bandwidth for each channel is 10 kilohertz, and then channel spacing is of course from center of channel to the center of the next channel is 10 kilohertz because they're evenly spaced across the 10 kilohertz intervals. So we're gonna so you can see that we're not pulling a fast one on you using some mystery radio hidden somewhere else. Here's the microphone. Watch the watt meter on the radio, and then also watch in the background. Watch that spectrum analyzer. You'll see when I key the mic that this is the radio that's actually on the spectrum analyzer. So I have it, the units would normally display for measurement purposes in DDM, but I, I realize most people that uh, just use radios, only text use the decibel scale. So I have the units set to watts. That your average radio operator is going to understand watts and can relate to that a little bit better. So what you're going to be looking at here is the main channel power and then you're going to have your upper channel which is that's not upper sideband. Upper channel means the next channel up and then lower is the lower adjacent channel. So key the microphone here you can see on, on channel we have about 3.7, 3.8 watts and then the upper and lower channels, the adjacent channel power is only 40 or 30, you know, high 30s to 40 something microwatts. That is minuscule. Um, microwatts, you have to remember, your scale goes from watts to milliwatts to microwatts. That is a minuscule amount of power for adjacent channel. So, Let's just take a look at it. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, like, say, a second harmonic, because that's a lot of your when you're talking CB radios. A lot of, a lot of that extra power or spurious energy usually ends up in the second harmonic. So we go to actually we'll turn the function measurement function off. Back to frequency, start frequency. Let's make that 20 megahertz. Stop frequency. To make that 60 megahertz. So that, so the way this is set up now, the left side of the screen will be 20 megahertz. The right side is 60 megahertz. So that's for a span of 40 megahertz. So when I key the microphone. You'll see there's the power from the radio. Now, 54 megahertz would be down here. Okay. Notice. There's really nothing to look at. So let's just narrow the span down a little bit. So let's make the start frequency 50 megahertz. So now it's 50 megahertz to 60 megahertz on the right side of the screen. So it would be 50, 1, 2, 3, 4. So right in the center here, because it's channel 19, so that's going to be the second harmonic is going to be up just a little bit above 54 megahertz. So if you watch there, you see that? I key the radio, tiny, just a little itty bitty spike. I mean, barely even noticeable. 
okay? There's almost nothing there. What that's telling you is all of the power that's coming out of this radio is on channel 19. It's not on channel 20, it's not on channel 18, it's not on adjacent channels, and it's also not in the harmonics. So let's just say for some strange reason, maybe the, the 54 megahertz trap circuit in this radio is filtering it out. Might be going through, some of you smart people out there might be going through your mind, you're thinking, well, maybe it's that there, it's got a big spike on the third, fourth, or fifth order harmonics. So let's go back over to the spectrum analyzer. Go to measurement function. What we're going to do is go down here to harmonic distortion. So, well, actually, let me go back here so you can see we're still uh, start frequency 20 megahertz. Okay, so there you can see we're still hooked up. Same, same radio, same setup. Okay, and we're going to go over here. I'll even key the mic so you can see the power there. We'll turn the measurement function on. We'll go to measurement function, and we'll select total harmonic distortion. So what it's what the spectrum analyzer you see it's scanning through right now. What the spectrum analyzer is doing is going through a preset program where it checks. This will be the actual transmit frequency, and then second, third, fourth, fifth, the whole way out to the tenth order harmonics. So just in case this radio would have really good suppression of second harmonics and you know not good at let's say you know third above that well this disproves it let me go back to amplitude here like I say it's it's measuring in dBm I understand a lot of people don't understand the decibel scale so let's set the units back to watts okay so now we're we're in watts watts now so key the microphone it's gonna take it a second to catch back up have to scan through everything okay so it, you can see it's starting to going through the measurements okay so there's 2.82 watts on channel and the second harmonic ah damn it timed out yeah it went into self calibration mode so okay turn it back on here frequency start stop so we can see it yeah, okay, there it is. We're going to go in, let's see, amplitude. Okay, I'm going to go back to measurement, function, harmonic distortion. Now and we're back to dBm. Let me go back in here and change to watts. Okay, and give it a second because it'll have to scan back through and catch up with it okay so there it's starting to scan through you can see it's going through so we got about let's say two and a half watts on channel and then second harmonic is 50 in the 54 megahertz band there's 192 micro watts and then on out the third fourth fifth the whole way out to the tenth if you look there are 160 basically all in the 160s micro watts that is minuscule. So the total, and that's basically the noise floor, you know, of the spectrum analyzer. Um, so the total harmonic distortions, you know, little less than two and a half percent for any CB radio, solid state or tube type. That's very good. Um, there's basically no measurable uh, harmonic distortion on this. So we'll take the measurement function, turn that off. Let's go back. So, like I say, the proof's in the pudding. Um, don't really care what people say about how tube type radios or splatter boxes. Like I say, um, it doesn't so much have to do with that it's a tube type radio. It has to do with what somebody did to it. I can make a solid state or a tube radio splatter all over the band, and I can also get it to where all the power is on channel. It just comes down to how you align the radio and what modifications you might have done to it. So, just wanted to, like I say, the main purpose of the video is to show tube type radios are not splatter boxes. Any radio can or can't be a splatter box depending what you do to it. So, there you go.